Richard Crowley, how are you tonight? I'm doing fine. How Got a question you? for you. So after the court hearing on Friday, right? Yeah. During the press release, I asked your coworkers, Jen Wood and the other lady, about what their thoughts of the outcome of this case in the relationship between the governor being the gov and the judge, being the, considering the judge is the governor's cousin, word on the street is, and what you can get off at Rhode Island.gov stating that they spent countless hours growing up at the Boys and Girls Club and he was sworn in by Governor, governor Dan McKee on March 27th. So my question for you is, what is, you, what is your thoughts on your integrity, on your integrity of your co-workers not knowing that information? Now, I'm not listening to you, Ms. Mendez. Have a nice day. I'm doing a video here. No, I don't support them, so that's all I'm asking. I, I can ask questions all I want. I'm a journalist. Don't interrupt me here to my journalism, please, Ms. Cynthia Mendez. Former Senator of Rhode Island. Former Senator of Rhode Island, right there, Cynthia Mendez, interfering in my journalism work. So, can you please answer that question for me, Rich? Sure. I have full faith in Jennifer Woods and Lynette Lavender. So, you have full faith in Jennifer Woods and Miss Lynette Lavender over there? Because yes. they even said they had no idea what I was talking about when it came to the relationship between the governor and the judge? I don't know if they had information or. Because all you're going to do is go to Google. It type in David Cruz R.I. Judge, and it comes up right on Rhode Island.gov. How can your how can your co colleagues not know that? It took me ten seconds to find out. How can they tell me I had no idea about that when it took me less than ten seconds to find out? I don't have any opinion on that at all, but I can once again say I have full faith in Jennifer Woods and that laptop. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Crowley. As you guys can see, that was Richard Crowley, the uh, lawyer for the plaintiffs on the John Doe versus the state of Rhode Island case. This is Mr. Tillenhouse right here. And uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't feel like they're in the best interest of we the people due to the fact that his co-workers, Jen Wood and Lynette Lavender, I believe he said, didn't know about the relationship between the governor and the judge. Now, word is on the street, Mr. Tillenhouse, I'm pretty sure you heard, is that the governor is not only best friends with the judge, uh, the judge, they're also cousins, is what I'm also hearing. Do you have anything you like to say? Well, I mean, the, um, what happened was that the uh, court that we were in, the judge has the obligation to uphold the state law, so that judge doesn't have the power to overrule the state law and give us our right to peacefully assemble, but we could, and we're considering now um, appealing to seek our right to peaceably assemble overnight. But the thing is, too, yes, the Superior Court judge also could have allowed him to stay, though. Am I wrong? Yeah, he could have um, preserved the injunction, but unfortunately... He um, didn't. Yeah, unfortunately, the, the state laws weren't permitting him to do that. And now my question for you. Now, how would you feel if you question... I'm not saying if you feel that when you ask two attorneys whether or not they feel that the outcome of the case had any impact mm -hmm. because due, due to the fact of the judge and the governor knowing each other for so long and being possibly cousins. Oh, definitely. I feel like the state when, when they said to me, though, yeah, the state when they did said what it wanted to do in this case, and it was a rushed legal job, and McKee should have protected our rights to peaceably assemble, but he didn't. He failed his oath of office. And it was a complete rush job. They just wanted the people off the state house rotunda. They just wanted to rush it. It was a complete rush job. Abuse of power, abuse of the legal system. Now, when you have two attorneys telling you, though, that they had no idea about the relationship between the judge and the, and the, and the governor, well, what I mean, would you feel should, about that? They should have been paying attention because when... It took when you, what, 10 seconds opened, to find that? When the judge that? opened the case on Wednesday, he said that he was going to try not to let his relationship with the governor... Uh, impact his decision. So he also made that known on the first day of the, the, the hearing. Yeah. So now he made that known on the first day of the hearing with these two lawyers, Lynette, Lynette Lavender and Jen Wood. Uh, suppose we didn't know, though. Mm -hmm. That's kind of sketchy, don't you think? I mean, I think that um, the judge had to rule in the way that he did based on the legal facts. But if we want our right to peaceably assemble, we have to win that at the Supreme Court. Oh, I hear that. I hear that. But do you... But, the fact that it took somebody like me you 10 seconds to find out about the judge's relationship off a of Google search, and him saying that on Wednesday, or on the first day of the court hearing, my thing is, I just don't get how Lynn Wood, uh, Jen Wood, I'm sorry, and uh, 
It, it should have been but a different that, judge. Lavender didn't even know. It should have been a different judge without the conflict of interest. And I agree as as well too. Thank you, Mr. Tillenhouse, for your uh, interview here. And I appreciate you. You have a great night. All right. See you soon.